Welcome to Game of Roses. This is Pace Case. This is Bachelor Clues. Today, we are joined by one of the most important crowns from the modern era. She turned in an astounding early season exit performance that ultimately garnered her the crown from an 11th place finish. She has proven herself to be a pioneer in contemporary parasocial play. We are humbled and honored to have with us today in the pit for her first off-contract interview, the season 17 Bachelorette, Katie Thurston. Hello, guys. Hello. <laughs> Thank you Actually, for doing this. Yeah. I know. Feels like a long time coming. A very uh, long time coming. I've been waiting for this moment. <laughs> So have we. Believe us. So yeah, have we. you're glowing. I, there's something about the off-contract yeah. energy. Yeah. Freedom feels great. <laughs> uh, speaking of glowing, your shirt. Please tell us about where did you get this incredible uh, piece of apparel? I love this shirt. Do you guys even sell this anymore? Uh, yeah, we sell it, I believe, every June, which is our, our anniversary of gore. Every You're going to need to sell it like after this episode because this is my yeah, favorite. Well, maybe we'll do a special release. Yeah. I tell uh, myself this is me. Like, this is me on the shirt. Oh, yeah. It's all of us. <laughs> Crying tears this of blood, is my hands shield. bound in, uh, <laughs> in thorny tears. roses. Yes. Um, no, but we can't thank you enough. When you wore that shirt, it was during your watch back of season 17, I think, Fantasy Suites episode, right? It was a risky move. <laughs> totally. It was a, a public shout out of... Uh, Game of Roses for sure. Right. And yeah, we are verboten in the Bachelor world. The producers, as I understand it, are not fans of our podcast or us. You know, I think they favor their in house podcasts <laughs> and anyone else, they can die. They can die. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm sure I'm sure there's some who are fans. I don't know. You don't, I have heard the phrase Huju yeah. during filming. So I know people know that's great about you guys. Oh, totally. I I mean Huju is probably the first piece of our lexicon that's been like absorbed by the game proper i feel like we still haven't seen it on screen in the document i think that time's coming though very soon yeah dark lord palmer used it in his uh instagram yeah it's pretty Spring good winner, blake moines speaking of hoojus let me just ask you this we're gonna jump around a little bit you performed a double hooju in one one-on-one -on -one date in season 25 mm -hmm. with matt james what was going through your head when you were thinking i'm gonna do a hooju in the beginning of the day date and the beginning of the night date Okay, I've been a long time viewer of the show, and I just <laughs> felt like those were like requirements. Yeah. And so every time I saw him, I just would do that, except in like a group setting. I'm not trying yeah. to like outrun the other girls. You don't want to win the race. And yeah. Do. But it just felt like it's like a requirement, you know? So I just, you do but, it without thinking. So you didn't think about it prior to it. You weren't gearing up to be like, this is a hooju opportunity. I'm going to bust this shit out. No, I was just, you know, playing the part. <laughs> Oh I never pre-planned it. It's just like we never see someone do it in the day portion and night portion. Yeah, so that, that was, was a really historic moment. <laughs> it blew our minds. I had no idea. <laughs> to say the least. Um, so you came into the show at the beginning of your rookie season, Bachelor Twenty Five. You had twenty point five k Instagram followers, and then you ended your season of The Bachelorette with nine ninety seven, and eventually <laughs> went through into a million. Today, you have seven hundred seventy six k Instagram followers, and you have nine hundred twenty six point one k on TikTok. Um, do you think the era of people getting massive amounts of Instagram followers and Bachelor is done? I do think so. I mean, it's it's oversaturated. Mm -hmm. Everyone, I feel like, became an influencer over the pandemic, you know, reality TV or not. And so it's just like a lot more competition. Yeah. Um, people are getting, I think, tired of it a little bit. You just don't see like the gains pre-COVID that you would see nowadays so yeah yeah well you have a, a very big tiktok number though bigger than your instagram number do you think bachelor is going to be able to transition into a tiktok fan base i know they're trying mm -hmm. but you have to have the right person running that and i'm not sure who's running it right now but i just don't think they're doing it right you mean the bachelor account yeah mm -hmm. like i th i think there's potential to transition mm -hmm. over to tiktok but you have to have like the right people who understand kind of like what the audience is looking yeah. for when you're saying they're trying is that like the producers, the show, Warner Brothers is actively saying we need to have a better social media presence or understand it, how to integrate it into the show better? I don't I don't know the conversations that happen behind the scenes. I've just seen 
think like I, I think even on my season there was like a filter that we tried to use like a mm. for for TikTok and it just kind of mm. like fell flat. Um, they did the TikTok live, which was not very good. <laughs> <laughs> so they're, like I said, yeah. they're trying. I don't know again like who's running or like what's happening. Yeah. They're dipping their toes. I just think it's going to take a little bit of uh, experience and practice to make it work. Yeah. Hey, I the Clayton dancing the Shrek dance. Like I watched that video. A million times. Was so. that his own or was that the Bachelor no, TikTok? It was, that was the, the bachelor, bachelor TikTok. Yeah. Or was it Instagram Reel? Whatever it was. I do know um, what you're talking about. I yeah. I mean, every Epic. once in a while they have a moment. <laughs> yeah. a, a thing will pop through and be like, okay, looks like they, they're kind of on board. But then, no, it always falls off. Yeah. So, um, I mean, this is something we always ask everybody. How did you get into The Bachelor? What, did you apply? Were you nominated? How did this idea to even go into this franchise start for you? First of all, I want to tell you guys, this was the second time applying. The first time mm. I applied was back in the day was in-person interviews. And you'll never believe who The Bachelor was. Nick, Nick Vial. <laughs> I knew it. What? I knew the look in her yes. eyes. She was about to. So, what? Yes. <laughs> Oh, and, but we didn't know at the time and he okay. hadn't had his little glow up yet and uh -huh. I remember the interview was going so well until they said what are your thoughts on Nick and I said hmm he's alright <laughs> And I think, I really think had I been more enthusiastic, oh I could have totally been on his season, but yeah. I just had oh no interest God. in that. So it was well, the first time. I mean, I think it worked out well for you. I think it worked out how it should have yeah. for you, ultimately. Oh, you know? I could not imagine being with, you know, Taylor Nolan and, and Corinne on that season. I would have been, and I was a whole different person back then. Sure. I would have been eaten up alive. Going on from that season was a better time mm. of my life for I sure. I don't know. Maybe you would have been in the bouncy house. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe Who knows? you could right now be married to Nick Vial. Oh, wow. In another universe. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Wild. Do you talk to Nick Vial at all? Do you have any kind of no. relationship with him now? No. No. I yeah. mean, it's publicly known that he's blocked, which made a whole stream of media yes. for like a week, and I got paid nothing for that. So shout out to all the podcasts and <laughs> YouTubers and everyone else who benefited off my five-second <gasps> sentence. But yeah, no, we don't talk. Hey, you have been able to make waves and headlines with the smallest things possible and I think there's like there's definitely if not an admiration of fixation on you in the nation people are very into Katie still it's I mean bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like you either love me or you hate me I just feel like there's no middle ground and I can feel it from both ends so yeah. it's it's wild. How's that going? <laughs> I, I will say I feel like I'm in a good place. Like you mentioned my followers. It's since dropped. I think that's a lot. Well, obviously Blake and I ended. That was a huge drop. Yeah. But then you just the people who love you for you stay and the mm -hmm. people who like hate follow you are now hate following someone else and they've moved mm -hmm. on. So I've just done a really good job at like protecting my peace and like keeping the people around me who support me. And if you don't like if you're not going to unfollow me, I will block you myself. That's fine. Right. So it's, yeah. been, it's been you great. You got rid of 124,000 haters. <laughs> <laughs> and counting. <laughs> and counting. Yes. Uh, all right. Let, let's get into your time in game. So you had, I mean, I would say arguably the most impactful limo exit of all time in the history of the game. Yeah. We all remember you walked out of the limo with a purple vibrator. Yes. Please tell us how that came to be. It was a discussion that I had with my producer mm -hmm. because I wanted to somehow bring up my TikTok following. At the time, I had a following mm -hmm. based around like sex and comedy, mm -hmm. and I didn't want that to be used against me with the whole like here for the wrong reasons, building a brand, whatever. And so I wanted to make that a conversation from the get go. And so mm -hmm. that just felt like a very direct way of saying like, here's my personality. Here's my like sense of humor. Um I was able to explain it later, you know, like, okay, so by the way, the reason I did this is because, and so at night one, I was able to have that discussion with Matt and get ahead of any drama or like mm. rumors about like, okay, oh, he has a TikTok following, you know? So that was kind of where all you started. You thought people would have figured out that you had a TikTok following? Yeah. So while we had our phones, the our names were released still. Like it was mm. out that there was like a quote TikToker mm. on the show. And so everybody already knew that I had a TikTok following, which puts a target on your back right totally. away. Yeah. So I was trying to get ahead of that. And luckily, it, I mean, it never became a thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, what did you think? Are you watching the current season? I'm not. Do you know anything about any of the players that are in it? I know there's one big TikToker. Yeah, mm -hmm. she's um, got almost a million followers. And I think actually a lot of the girls seem to have a pretty decent following 
in comparison yeah, th- to there's previous. a couple of other ones there's that are like in the 100k TikTok. Yeah. There was Christina Mandrell is like a professional influencer. Um, but none of those players have made it far. And so I'm like, it feels to me like they brought them into the show specifically to vilify people who have uh, social media followings or do that as a career. Interesting. And then it didn't quite work, so they had to cut them all loose early. That's what it feels like to me anyway. I don't yeah. know if that's true. That's what it feels like. Um, so in that season, you come out with the vibrator. On night one, you have this moment where you come in and steal from, I forget who the player was, Mari but Mari Pepin. Pepin. I'll never I, for- I will never forget. Because and I didn't know what they were talking about. And I watched on TV and I was like, that's the discussion I interrupted. Great. But when that is happening, that's obviously not your choice. You're just fired in like a missile with a vibrator. They're like, I don't remember. Did you tap her on the I shoulder ta- with yes. it? Yeah. I, I tap <laughs> her what on the you shoulder. Mean you don't remember. I, that's like one of the most memorable steals in my life. Well, and you're watching it back and there's like sad music playing. She's uh-huh. talking about her family. Yeah. And it was a very serious conversation. I had no idea. And then, of course, I go to try to message her like the day of that uh, episode airing. And she has like, it's limited. So you have to like only be a follower if you can message mm-hmm. her, which we couldn't follow. So I had no way to even reach out to her and be like, I am mm-hmm. so sorry. I had no idea that's what you guys were talking about. God damn. Mm-hmm. And I mean, you know, say as much as you can, but is it your idea to go do the steal? Or are you literally like sitting there having fun with somebody and a producer's like, come on, you got to go do this now? I mean, we're all trying to go and steal, but you can't, you couldn't have 30 women all attack Matt at the same sure. time. So there's gotta be a little bit of structure yeah. to it, you know? So it was my time <laughs> to go <laughs> <laughs> and I wasn't going to pass up on the opportunity, you know, and you just yeah, go in. We've seen props used to perform steals before. Whistles, Megaphone. Uh, paper airplanes. Yeah. Yes. But, uh, never a vibrator. And I loved it. MJ. MJ, MJ, I believe, yes. is the name. Uh, um, you also got embroiled in the a tattle scandal, kind of, I forget what we called it, a vague tattle or something yeah, like that. general vague tattle. General tattle. vague tattle, <laughs> where um, Brittany Galvin was in the crosshairs of a, a rumor that, mm-hmm. as you said to Matt James, could possibly destroy her life about her being a sex worker. How, explain that to us. Like, how did that all come about? How did you make the decision to go to him and tell him that? Obviously, producers have to facilitate that conversation because he's outside. I think at the time was talking to a producer, in fact. Yeah. And so you have to come interrupt that. So they've isolated him for you to come have this this moment in the spotlight. How did that all go down? I remember talking to my producer being like, like it needed to stop. Like there needed to be a shift in the house. And in my naive little brain, I thought it was going to be this like mean girls moment where we like do the trust fall and like everything's going to be happy. I'm so dumb. Like, of course, that's not how it's going to go down. Yeah. Like, I don't know why I thought that. But I was like, OK, there needs to be some like an aggressive change because this is like constant negativity and drama. And like we just all got to be friends here and survive. And so I was like, OK, well, I'll do it. But I'm not going to say any names. And mm-hmm. like and just, we'll just all be happy. <laughs> Yeah. I I, oh, I remember just watching that play out, you know, like the next, I think it was the next day when Matt came in and he said, somebody told me and the whole, I held my breath. I held my breath because oh, I knew God. a camera was going to be on me. I didn't want a reaction. <laughs> this was, I knew the second that the tone was delivered the way it was, that it was not going to go down the way I thought oh, it was going to go. I, I was like, of course, it's not going to be like a happy reset in the house. This is, mm. it's about to get worse. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that sucks. <laughs> is there when you're in those moments and you can kind of feel like, okay, this is coming to a head. This is a big dramatic moment in the season, whatever. Is there any part of you that's thinking about how this will be edited, how the show will ultimately be presented, and is there a possibility that all of this will maybe be left on the cutting room floor? Yeah, I mean, I definitely remember the whole time thinking there are so many different stories and perspectives to tell the story of like Matt and the women. So you have no idea. Like I could live, especially because I went home, I was 11th place. I could have just been edited out essentially, you know? So I have no idea what's going to be shown, what they're going to focus on, how much. Mm -hmm. Um, There's always the fear of like, are they telling it the way that you experienced it? You know? Um, So absolutely. Did it surprise you when your limo entrance was the first moment shown from the whole season? (laughs) Yes. I had no idea what the the thought behind that like I actually kind of thought it was like a mistake at first and mm. it was just mm. in my opinion it was kind of clunky like it happened but then all of a sudden you're focused on like Matt's very serious story yeah. and I think I almost feel like he didn't even have enough screen time as The Bachelor for that like intro episode it was oh just, no that it was, was your episode of TV you were the, the star of it. 
Yeah. And not with a contestant. So that was really surprising to me, yeah. like to break Same. the format that way. But I feel like that's how powerful that limo exit was. It was just like, let's get them in mm-hmm. early. We got some yeah. shock value. Um, how soon after you exit season 25 did they contact you to potentially be the bachelorette? I feel like it was after the holidays. Like everything happens very quick. Everything's very hush hush. Everyone's being talked to. Like mm-hmm. no one, no one feels safe. There's rumors about who is all being interviewed. People are kind of like throwing out like, oh well, like did you get talked to or like oh yeah. Everyone's like mm-hmm. testing it, but no one wants to say it. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, so truly, I was in denial for a very long time that I was even being considered because I was like why me i mean don't get me wrong i love me but like like 11th place white girl like that that doesn't really make sense you know yeah Yeah. um so i i was waiting for like the moment of even who was it you guys would know who was like checking into his flight to be the bachelor and then like the night before they told him we're going a different direction he was a singer like a pal yeah, it was Luke. I mm. heard that he like checked into his flight to leave to be the bachelor and they they pulled the plug. So Ooh, I was even when rough. I was told like it's official, I was like totally. I'll believe it when I'm standing there in front of a limo. I mean, there's all <laughs> kinds of stories like that. Yeah. Luke Pell checking first flight, Kayla Quinn, they had shot promos with her to be the next bachelorette before they picked Jojo. Uh I feel like they do that kind of consistently. W- let me ask you this. Was there anything that happened in season 25 producer-wise? you know, things that maybe you didn't agree with that gave you any pause when you were offered Bachelorette, mm-hmm. where you were like, do I really want to fucking get back into this? I mean, your your mental health is a big thing in general. Mm. Producers, though, no, it's like, it's a whole different experience on the other side. Yeah. So you could go into it being like, well, this is how I felt as a, a cast member, um, one of 30. And it was, for the most part, at least from my experience, I know everyone has their own, nothing shocking for me. I was like, oh, okay. I, I got this. But then you become the lead, and it's it's nothing like you thought you could mm-hmm. expect or experience mm-hmm. when you were on the season before. Who do you think from season 25 got the worst end of the deal from producers in your cast? Oh, gosh. Mm. I mean, it sounds cliche, but truly, like, the whole Mean Girl narrative mm-hmm. was an overkill, in my opinion. Yeah. And, that, and that, I think, cu- coming from me, that even says a lot because I know they really, like, amplified me as, like, this hero and, and really downgraded these women to a, to a certain mentality of, like, this mean girl yeah. group. There were, there were negative moments. The Don't get me wrong. versus JV. Yeah. Fight, you mean? Okay. But there were so many, like, great moments, too. And it's just, like, it just sucks that they had to, like, make it so divided and make it such a, such a narrative when it's, like, there were so many good moments, too. You know, totally. and even like moments where like people are like making up off camera. Mm-hmm. Everyone, everyone truly is trying to survive and just like move forward. Yeah. And you're just not given that flexibility. I, was there someone that you assumed would be the bachelorette from your season? Um, I definitely thought before Rachel was picked, I actually thought she was going to be um, a good contender. Mm-hmm. And of course, not knowing like all that would transpire after the fact. <laughs> what do you mean? What transpired? Well, I mean, uh... <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah, we're not going to go there. <laughs> um, but Rachel and Brie would be like the top two yeah. while filming that I was like, if they don't get picked, they're definitely going to be a bachelorette for sure. Mm-hmm. Well, neither of them is the next bachelorette. At the After the Final Rose, they announce double bachelorettes in a row, you and Michelle Young. Did you know that? They were going to announce both of you as the Bachelorette at the time. How did you feel about the double announcement? Um, as far as I know, I found out that day. Like, again, I didn't trust anything until it's official, you know? Mm. Um, and I actually cried tears of happiness because mm. there was so much negativity. Because it was already, like, rumored that I was going to be the Bachelorette. Mm. And so there's so much negativity in that, given everything that was happening with Chris Harrison, given the, the final 10 women being so diverse and then yeah. me picking being picked for that role I just felt like relief of like okay this feels like a good step then you know like it's not just me it, Michelle's you know being given this opportunity as well um so I was I was thrilled I was so happy for her and and to be able to like have her own season you know I can imagine sharing that that was a chaotic season with Gabby and yeah. Rachel unfortunately yeah. in my opinion um but yeah I felt relief overall 
Yeah, that it wasn't you and Michelle Young fighting over Nate Olakoya. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. So, did you, I'll flash forward a little bit. You watched uh, Michelle's season, I take it. Not fully. <laughs> oh, shit. Like, truly, you guys, after my experience, I, I, you're mm. almost like, I don't know if the sparkle's gone. I don't know if it's your mental health. I don't know if you just know too much. I just don't have the same pull in watching the show that I used to. And I, I've been watching it for a very long time. Mm -hmm. um, and I just really haven't been able to get back into it. Even Paradise with knowing people, having the guys that I dated on there. I thought I'd be definitely interested in that. I just, I can't. I just, Interesting. I'm, I feel very checked out in terms of the show now. Yeah. Well, did you see the episode or hear about the fact that they gave Michelle Young $200,000 at the end of her season? I did. <laughs> I absolutely did. How did that make that. you feel? Oh, yeah. Um, well, obviously, like, that was, <laughs> I don't even know how to feel. <laughs> I have felt some kind of way. But what I did think when that happened, I was like, well, there's always strings attached to yeah. that. You know, it's never just a nice, here's some money. You know, like, there's, I think, in my own opinion, and I, I truly don't know, I was like, they want people to work out because these relationships keep ending. And so nothing's more motivating than a little more money to head start your yeah. newly found engagement you know yeah totally so i just i don't know the reasons behind it but that was my thought I'm like oh they're really trying to make these people work out because it hasn't been working out right um all right well let's get into your bachelorette dumb. it begins really with a tweet that you sent out mm. uh which <laughs> you know you can argue one way or another it was instrumental in getting chris harrison removed from the franchise yeah. maybe it had no effect but in my opinion, <laughs> it was it was one of the most expert plays that we've ever seen parasocially because you really changed the trajectory of the entire franchise, not just your season. But um, the tweet, Lizzie, do you have it? Do you want to read it? Yeah, we. It's Mar early March 2021. I stand with other alumni who have expressed that learning and growth require time. I hope that Chris Harrison continues to take more time to step away while sincerely educating himself and dedicating himself to the work, we can all grow and do better with time, and I hope he does. This is after we had a bunch of parasocial plays. First, most of the players from the most recent seasons issued this joint statement on Instagram, supporting Rachel Lindsay, denouncing racism. And then several players of color had gone a step further, starting with Ivan Hall, uh, issuing an ultimatum that he wouldn't be comfortable going on uh, Bachelor in Paradise if Chris Harrison was the host. And then Piper James, Serena Pitt joined him. But this tweet came after the shooting of After the Final Rose. So you're already locked in as the crown. And you tweeted this Thursday night. And then Friday, the official Bachelor and Bachelorette Instagram accounts post the same message. Chris Harrison will not be hosting the next season of The Bachelorette. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Sounds about... Right. <laughs> do you, what do you think the impact of, of your tweet was? Do you think it was the reason he is no longer with us? I mean, there's definitely, <laughs> there's definitely a series of events that led to decisions being made. Um, I didn't know what was going to happen in terms of the host for my season, yeah. but I wanted to make sure my opinion was heard. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, you kind of don't really have a choice, I think. It's a bad look, I think, if if your lead is tweeting that, and then he still is the host. I agree. So uh, it was a very scary move because it's an instant target on my back. I don't know, like, how deep the, the friendships go. I mean, he was the host for 20 years. Yeah. Um, you know, I certainly wasn't calling for him to be fired. That's a decision that is made behind the scenes. But I certainly was not going to have him be on my season with it just being so fresh you know, in everyone's minds and hearts. And there was just so much more that needed to be done before he was coming back. Oh, know? totally. They couldn't have had him host your season and just ignore everything. Be like, I did the work. I read a book or two and now I'm here to help you find love. That would not have worked in any <sighs> way. But when you say you wanted your opinion heard, I want to ask you two things about what you just said. When you say you wanted your opinion heard, you could have just called a producer. You sent a fucking tweet. Discussions were had. Uh-huh. Um, you know, I, people knew my opinion behind the scenes. Chris knew my opinion directly. Yeah. Um, but and that was the last day I had my phone. And so at that point, I still personally did not know who was going to host. I right. did not know it was Caitlin or Tasha. I didn't know what plans were had. I just knew mm -hmm. who I did not want to host. And I just made sure to put out that tweet mm. as my last Hail Mary of uh, 
I, I mean, don't even know what to like, call it. It's an extraordinary <laughs> it tweet. It's, you know, it's arguably changed Bachelor history. And it's, you're in such a vulnerable position. They're about to shoot your season. They could have ripped you apart. Like, yeah. oh, I mean, I that was the risk I took. And I mean, I, I still think I do suffer from mm. the consequences of doing mm. that tweet without permission or talking. Oh, so you didn't get permission, you're saying? No. It's my social media. I don't need <laughs> yeah. permission to say whatever yeah. I want on my social media. And I made, I was, I took a lot of time to structure that tweet. Yeah. Mm. You know, I was, I, I made sure to kind of mimic what's already been being said by everybody else. You know, I, I, it wasn't a tweet that I did lightly. There was so much thought that went into that. Yeah. And I remember just hitting it and just like shaking <laughs> because I just, I just knew what that could do and what it has done mm -hmm. you know i'm now like a in my opinion a black sheep in the franchise yes um, i think that's a correct opinion so. but that's what i was going to ask you my second part of it is when you say that you were afraid it was going to put a target on your back you mean a target from the producers producers editing like i don't i don't know the structure behind the scenes i don't mm. know what i just like what i just did to myself you know in yeah. terms of am i going to be punished for this <laughs> did anybody ever talk to you about the tweet I mean, it definitely wasn't a secret. Like, it was a very loud sure. tweet. Um, someone said it was a tweet heard around the world. So yeah. uh, it was definitely... At least around the nation. <laughs> it was definitely <laughs> a, a loud statement. But, I mean, did you, like, that night, did producers reach out to you or anything? Did Or did you just kind of, like, go into your season and, like, here's the new host and everybody just kind of ignored it? Um, there were discussions. I think pe some people were a little disappointed. Mm -hmm. um, but to my defense, no one's communicating with me the plan. Yeah, you know, and and as you saw in episode one, I had no idea it was Taisha and Caitlin. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I would have had comfort knowing there was a game plan, but in the moment, I personally just felt very out of the loop and very yeah. um, pushed against a wall, and that mm -hmm. was just like my defense of like, I have expressed what I want, and everyone knows it. So, however that plays out on night one, I don't know, but at least people know where I stood. Yeah, and mm -hmm. whoever is standing next to you, it's it's going to be an implied that you're okay with it whoever it is. So, um, no, I, I admire the tweet. I think it was great. Uh, I do too. I and... mean, we talk all the time on game of roses about the fact that this game doesn't exist without the players and really the players have all the power. They just don't wield it very often. And that was in my opinion, like an expert example of a player who became a lead wielding that power. That's what you can do as a lead if you want, you know? I mean, you have to kind of know your, your rights and understand what you can and can't do, and, and that's kind of what I did. You know, it's it's my social media. It's my opinion. I'm going to state it. What ends up happening afterwards, I'll figure it out as I go. But, yeah, I think a lot of people get scared, and uh, I think certain people would prefer people be scared. It's yeah. the ones who are very, mm -hmm. like, outspoken that end up kind of not being supported, in my opinion. No one likes, no one likes a, a woman who isn't scared, you know? Yeah. yeah. So... Especially not The Bachelor. <laughs> uh, I thought this might have been a consequence of this tweet, but apparently you said that this was filmed before. Be a Katie <laughs> for your Bachelorette promo. You're in this white shirt, this purple pencil skirt, which seems to be alluding to the vibrator. What was the vision behind this? <laughs> Okay, I, I will... know maybe no one cares about this except me, but no, I, I need care. To know. I care also. <laughs> Two things come to mind. One, I remember when they presented the vision at the time. It it sounded like a great idea. Like yeah. the con like the concept was great. It was relevant at the time um, because everyone they they do like look at Reddit, you know, to get like I think inspiration. I don't know. Interesting. Mm. So I know there was like a be a Katie like thing going around, which in that exact moment would make sense but this isn't going to be like played out till like june be a katie is lost in people's minds there's now drama <laughs> overshadowing anything related to mm -hmm. be right. a katie um so in the moment it sounded like a great idea i didn't question anything during filming of that promo i was enjoying it i was like this is gonna be so fun and then i watch it back and i'm like i'm so awkward on <laughs> camera i am not meant for this <laughs> I hated it. I, I hope to never film a promo in my life ever again. <laughs> I disagree. I think you were made for this. And I, <laughs> like, I don't know. I just, we saw you at, we met you in person for the first time at Stefan Love Grows Ball. And I was like, 
Katie was ruling the room. You know, you could be like, there's there's a former crown right there. Yeah. Uh, were you worried about the ratings for your season or was that not going through your mind? It didn't really go through my mind. I think every year they've been declining, but not even because of a lead. It's just like, I mean, you guys talk about it all the time. It's We're going to yeah. a different way of streaming. The Nelson rating is a way outdated way of even measuring ratings. So like yeah. it just that... I got my paycheck. I don't care about your ratings. <laughs> like, let's be honest. Like, that's not my job. Yeah. I'm there to work and your ratings is on you guys. Um, What was it like? This is kind of a, a question, I guess, that's linked to the social media aspect of this. Eventually, you did hit a million Instagram followers. Mm -hmm. What was that like? Do you remember the exact moment it happened? Um, I know it was like shortly after the engagement. I think 1.1 was the highest. Mm -hmm. it, it didn't. I, it doesn't hit me any kind of like it's just it's just all part of the experience I think yeah. like I wasn't like oh yeah a million you know um I mean you're just thrown into this whole new world you're now engaged you're now in public brands are reaching out and you're like uh, I can't you know managers want to come out and like rep you and I'm just like I don't even know what I'm doing right now I don't even yeah. like I, just, yeah. I can't even breathe right now so you're, I mean you're an instant celebrity it it really felt like that in the moment. I remember we had a meet and greet and we had like bodyguards for me. And I was like, oh, damn. what life am I about to enter that I need bodyguards? And so I was very concerned at first that I was going to need like all this like security and protection. It's not like it's not that serious. <laughs> maybe in <laughs> the peak. Good. Maybe the, I mean, thankfully, <laughs> honestly, I think in the peak of it, maybe it is. But now I, I very much live a normal life in San Diego. <laughs> Yeah. Without bodyguards. How did you um, find our podcast? So during Matt season, naturally, we all can't help but like hear about ourselves, read about ourselves. What mm -hmm. are people saying? Um, and I learned very quickly that that's not very fun, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys made it enjoyable because you don't talk about it. You talk about it as a, like a game and you mm -hmm. say it in a way that's like not negative to anyone like nothing was personal you know everything felt yeah. very just like critical from a, a game standpoint and it was just like an enjoyable listen I was like I could listen to this they can critique, critique me all day and I'm still gonna like leave that podcast feeling good the other ones I was like this is not good for me let's not <laughs> tune into these other ones so you guys are like the most like neutral positive <laughs> podcast in terms yeah. of like reviewing and talking and whatever and so I just I really enjoyed it and continued to listen to it Oh, well, I, I was just curious, but thank you. We yeah, obviously yeah. appreciate that. Um, so let's get into this. Your bachelorette season. It's one of the bubble seasons. You're shooting at the Tamaya Resort in New Mexico. Yes. You're locked in your room until they tell you to come out. What was it? What was the experience of being the lead of a bubble season like? Like, did you uh, in any way regret not being able to do international travel and having kind of the standard bachelorette experience? I mean, I was on mats, which was also a bubble season, so I didn't mm -hmm. know any different. Um, looking back now, though, it's just like, damn, we had like a mud wrestling date when we could have gone to like France. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, but in the, in the moment of it all, I was like, this is actually a blessing because... I don't want to be blinded by the like highs of like travel and like yeah. the the fanciness of like whatever. It's like I want to fall in love with like what's what's on real. Toilet. Honestly, <laughs> like it just like wrestling in the mud, sitting at the whatever. Like I just thought it was going to be a good way to not be blinded. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, now that I'm single, none of it actually mattered. <laughs> so I'm like the least I could have done was traveled. <laughs> but yeah. um, in the moment, I I was trying to look at it from a positive perspective. You traveled through your heart and your mind. <laughs> yes. You know? It was astral projection. <laughs> yes. um, you mentioned to us before this interview that your season started with a dinner with the producers. Yeah. Can you tell us what that was like? And and how many producers are present? These are the upper echelon producers. Yeah, these assume. are executive producers. Um, I can't remember how many. In my head, it would be like, I don't know, five or six. And just, it was like, like a kickoff, like it, it was a very exciting moment and kind of probably the last moment we were all mm. going to like be together and happy <laughs> and excited, right. fully, fully rested and fed, you know, like it was just like the peak of like, all right, guys, this is the final supper. <laughs> um, so it was really enjoyable. Like I was, I just felt so taken care of in that moment of like, yeah. I am like, I am their person, you know, I felt yeah. like a like a queen at a table. I don't know. It was just, it was a really exciting moment of like, we're about to do this. Did you feel like they were trying to find you a husband and like, and would, would find you the best person and were on your team for your love? 
story. You know, <laughs> in the moment, yeah. In the moment, I'm so naive. In the moment, I'm like, this is going to be great. <laughs> yeah. But, but then you look back and you learn a lot. And there's a lot I wish I knew, which is like, yes, they want a, a successful love story, I think. Um, but also they are making a show. And that was a concept I wish I embraced more while filming. Um, I think I wanted it to be so authentic and real and about me and my love journey. And you just can't make a good television show if you do that. So there's just things that have to happen to have drama and to mm -hmm. stir the pot and to have a, a crazy turn, you know? Mm -hmm. um, if you knew that you wanted to make it more like TV, what would you have done differently? I, I just think I would have had a very transparent conversation with my producers of like, just tell me what your plan is and I'll tell you what mine is and we'll just try to make this work together. Mm. You know, it's when it's when that you're trying to make it authentic, but they have an agenda, but you're not being told about mm. it. And you're like, wait, what? Like, there's just so much that's just not communicated, in my opinion. I assume. I don't know. <laughs> no, I think I the mean, best, like, situation would be kind of how Nick Vial has described it as, like, you're kind of a co-EP on the show. Mm. Truly. And you're like trading different things back and forth. Oh, and I th and I think it could go better. And again, I don't I don't know this is going to be like a hot button. I don't know what the plans were with Greg, right? Mm -hmm. In my opinion, it felt like such a crazy exit and the the montage they had, like I was like they must have a plan for him. Yeah. And despite what people say, people are like he was her f true final pick. He wasn't and producers knew that. So had they just, and again, I don't know what their plan was, but here's an example, you know, had they been like, we would love to have Greg be our next Bachelor, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then I could have like helped understand totally. that, you yeah. know, like I, as long as I get Blake, then let me help you get your next Bachelor. But there's, yeah. there's such a like curtain of just like, they want it to be real, I guess, but I don't know. It, it was just hmm. like, a, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Yeah, I think you could they... have like conscripted some sort of heartbreaking victimization edit for him instead yeah. of kind of what it turned but into. But that was on the producers. Was... I think they did want him to be The Bachelor and they fucking yes. cut him wrong. That edit that they gave him in your guys' final uh, confrontation, you know, I think they thought he was going to come out of that looking like I a agree. victim. It was like hero and it music. It was the exact opposite. Yeah, they gave him hero score. They made it seem like you were the one being the mean person, but it was like, no. Every, after that edit, everybody was like, oh, he fucking gaslit her. He's a monster, blah, blah, blah. They tanked their own Bachelor with a dumb edit. Yeah. At least that's the way it came across to me as a viewer yeah. who has watched literally every fucking second of this show <laughs> since 2002, you know? Well, um, it's hard to know, like, what conversations they had with him and, you know, yeah. how that was... But it se his exit seemed like out of the blue for you, like as if it was just really intense. You know, I yeah. in my head, I'm like, if had he just been like, I can't do this process anymore. Leave with me. What something just, I don't know, chill. <laughs> it, I think it just could have gone a whole different way for him and myself. You know, it's like if I stay, then like he doesn't look like a bad guy and he's leaving, and it, it's just like I understand, but I'm staying. You know, like there's just so many ways that could have gone had there just been like, I don't know, better communication amongst everybody, but it was so yeah. intense. Yeah. I mean, do you think that that lack of communication between producers and leads has anything to do with their, again, this is just my perception as a viewer of the show, it feels like they want to control everything to such a degree that they can't let anyone know anything. Like, I, it really feels like they view you guys as chess pieces or puppets, and, like, they kind of get off on being like, we're pulling the fucking strings, ha, ha, ha. And if they give you information, or if you're working with them in concert in any way, then that kind of falls away. It gives you, like, almost too much power to let you behind the curtain. Yeah. I, I There were moments where I felt like I was being authentic mm -hmm. to my feelings and, and my thoughts, and I could tell it wasn't what I think they were wanting. And right. there'd be times where I'm like, tell me what you want. They're like, we want you to say what you feel because they do want it to be real, but then, but they have an idea of what their hope is going to mm -hmm. happen. Yeah. And so I think that's where like the like friction comes. It's like, okay, either you want me to be authentic or you need to like guide me to what you want. Otherwise I'm not going to say the things you're hoping I say because yeah. no one's talking. I'll right. be authentic. Just give me an area. <laughs> you know? <laughs> It's, it's a struggle because it's reality TV. You want yeah. it to be real, but you guys also have your own agenda and game plan that you're not communicating. Mm -hmm. And when it doesn't go the way that you were hoping, then there's like friction and tension and things are, there's a turn that you weren't expecting, you yeah. know? I feel like I would be on board if I like put myself in that position. I would be like, okay, as long as you let me have this person as my ring winner, 
I'll give you the victimization edit for Greg Grippo. I'll tell him, like, I could never be with someone who, you know, played basketball or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. A better reason. But, like, literally. And, I mean, I guess they don't want you to be acting, per se, but... And they want it to seem like there's some drama going into the finalists and all this. But I mean, in these in the most recent seasons, I know you haven't been watching, but in the most recent seasons, it really seems like they try to sabotage the final relationship by any means fucking necessary. And I don't understand that at all when they purport to have the show that is trying to bring people together and they need love stories to come out of it to, you know, uphold the narrative that like, that's what this is, the lie of it, you know. Um, speaking of that, though, Nick Vial has famously said, on night one, he basically knew who his top three were, and then the rest of the season is just the producers arranging the deck chairs. Um, was that similar on your season? Hmm. How did that work? I mean, early on, there's so many guys, right? And so you have, like, an idea of who you want to keep. You definitely have an idea of who, like, you have zero interest in. Mm -hmm. And so you're, like, flexible. You're, like, exactly, like, I, I, as long as these people stay, I don't really care mm -hmm. what happens with these, like, bottom ten, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you're just like not invested. You're not pushing back. Yeah. You know, you're just like, yeah, like as long like you said, as long as my like mm -hmm. top ten are here, I don't really care what order yeah. the bottom go. Michelle Young recently said that she kept Clayton longer than she wanted him to be there. That obviously now in retrospect was because they wanted him to be the bachelor. At least he was in the running for it and they needed more screen time for him. Did anything like that happen on your season? Um hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, that's a big thing. I believe it did. Justin Glaze. Uh, edited it out of your season. Yeah. How did you feel about that? I hated that for him because Justin actually had a huge role in my experience. And I was kind of shocked, especially given how far he went. Granted, circumstances got him to like a second place, you know, versus like the top four, though, truly. Um, I felt bad. I hated that. I hated that the only thing they really focused on was like his parents not being there. Yeah. You know, and he was a, an early connection. We kissed the, the first night we met. I don't even know if that made it to TV, to be honest, but um, we had a great connection. There were so many fun, goofy moments. Like we had like giggle fits often, like a lot of his personality, our moment, everything was just removed. And I just, I think they prioritized too much other things that weren't as important. And it just, it was just disappointing, honestly. So I was happy that he at least got to go to Paradise mm -hmm. uh, the mm -hmm. second year that Paradise happened. But yeah, I was shocked, to be yeah, honest. He got to go to Paradise twice that season. <laughs> he left the beach and then came back. Yeah. Oh. They See, resurrected him to come in for another love triangle thing where he gets in another fight. I mean, they just have batted that guy around. Yeah. I think what they've done to him is really bad. Um, was there anything that happened in your season of Bachelorette that didn't make TV that you wished would have? Hmm. Mm, nothing like stands out and obviously it's been like it feels like a decade I don't even know yeah um for the most part I think I was like happy and fine there's certain things that I wish were just a little more uh transparent like there's a whole like Greg and me fight that just you, you can only show so much mm -hmm. you know and I just feel like had there just been a more clear picture it, it would have told a bigger story maybe. Yeah. But. I remember they had, I, I believe it was your season that had the, um, the drag queen group mm. date. Right. Mm -hmm. And I remember they didn't show any oh, of it yeah. on TV, but then they oh. little pieces of it came out online. And okay. I was like, why is this not in the fucking show? Actually, now that you say that, that reminded me of the whole, um, Desiree talk that I had. There was a moment where I was ready to quit the show. Truly. I mm. was just exhausted and done and people were leaving and I would just, any trust I had left in the show and the process were gone. And I called Desiree to get help. They ended up airing that, again, like you said, separately, like through YouTube or their Instagram yeah. channel, where I was like, she was instrumental in convincing me to stay and finish. And she oh, wow. didn't, they didn't even put that on TV. Interesting. That's bizarre. She is essentially the female Sean Lowe. You're talking about Desiree Hartsock. Yeah, because she had a situation. AKA Siegfried. I haven't watched her in a while, oh, but where her one Brooks of her final left. top yeah. people left, she was devastated. Mm -hmm. Now, fast forward to now, it's obviously worked out for her. Um, yeah. Like, yeah. why wouldn't they do that? They they have a real hard time, I think, acknowledging the like the history of successful players, too, except for Sean Lowe, obviously, as we call him, Goldini. He's in every goddamn episode <laughs> of the sex <laughs> show front season. He's in the shower scrubbing his abs, eating sandwiches with him and shit, FaceTiming him. I'm surprised they didn't have Goldini zoom in with him when he had COVID. 
Um, yeah, Desiree's still with her ring winner, right? Yeah. 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 And they have kids. Like, they're, they're... I don't know why you wouldn't put that on, especially if she convinces you to stay. That's To me, that's appraising of the process. But yeah. Uh, do you, I can't remember which Bachelor this is, but they said, it might have been Sean Lowe, actually, but he was like, mm-hmm. you spend basically in total like 24 hours with this person. So kind of like, he was still getting to know Catherine during their engagement. Do you feel like you got to know like the real people from your season? Do you think it's enough time or it's possible really to develop a relationship resulting in like a true engagement? No, no. I don't. Yeah. I I think it's a, it's a gamble. Like it's just like, it's mm-hmm. just like dating in any situation. You go on a first date and maybe that ends up being the last first date you ever have, or you guys break up six months later. Uh, the show is just a unique way to try dating. But yeah, like I would agree. Like you, I remember when I got off the show, I didn't even have Blake's number and he couldn't reach mm-hmm. out to me because he was like locked out of his Instagram and it was just like this whole thing. That's so bizarre. I'm like, this what? is such a weird way to start off my engagement. And I remember my first thought truly because I didn't know him well. was like, wait, is he actually into me or was this the part of the show? Because I, I couldn't get a hold of him. I had no way to reach him. I didn't know what was happening. I so DM his mom. I mean, I could have, I guess, yeah. But even then, like, it's just so new and so awkward yeah. and yeah. clunky and it just felt like an arranged marriage a little bit. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, I mean, to not have the ability to even have a conversation with somebody until, obviously, fantasy suites, mm-hmm. which is my next question, what goes on in the fantasy suites? Is oh. it just talking all night? And what are you talking about? Do you immediately, like, the door locks, the cameras leave, and you're like, who did you vote for? <laughs> Do you believe in God? Like, is that... How it goes down. I remember being like feeling uncomfortable because it was just, it was so the first time we're truly alone. There's no one around watching us, no one guiding us, no one giving us dates. Like we're, Mm -hmm. we're just in this room together. And I, I'm pretty sure the first thing I did was drink a lot of wine. Like I just needed to be drunk if I'm being honest. (laughs) Um, But yeah, we we truly, we talked so, so long, so long. Like I, I want to say it was like 4 a.m. when we like finally maybe went to bed. Mm -hmm. And then next thing you know, (laughs) it's time to start the next day of filming. And it's just like, oh, I'm exhausted. And like, it was crazy. But yeah, tons of talking, tons of talking. Do you get into like politics and religion and stuff? I'm sure we did. I don't remember like exactly what we talked yeah. about, but it is the the time to like really get to know each other mm-hmm. on a level that you haven't yet. Um, I couldn't even tell you like what we talked. About. Like I don't remember. Like it was yeah. so long ago, and you're like already like sleep deprived at that moment anyway. But yeah. Do you ever talk to anybody? This goes for uh, Bachelor season twenty five or Bachelor at seventeen. Do you talk to anybody about social media ever during the course of that? Hmm. Does it ever come up? Instagram, what you're doing, this and that. I know it definitely comes up because even I remember even on like Matt's season, we had to like be careful not to say the phrase TikTok or like Instagram. I I just don't think they want to like. The producers told you that. I don't remember where this rule came from. I just yeah. know we had to keep saying social media instead of like the name. And I mm-hmm. just assumed it was like free marketing if we said Instagram yeah. or TikTok. Yeah. But. I think that's since changed, right? Didn't, haven't they straight up said Instagram for Piper? They said Instagram in this in this season yeah. and Brendan and Piper. And yeah. in both cases, those players who said it were immediately turned into horrible <laughs> villains, death threats, you lose all your spawn con, <laughs> drop 100,000 Instagram followers overnight. Um, or at least um, Brendan James did. Or sorry, Brendan Marais did. I always mix their first and last names <laughs> up. Um, no, it's fascinating to me. I, I'm always curious about it because it seems like it's such an integral part of the game now is that you go on this, you get some kind of a social media following. That is the next step after you come out of the game. And to not acknowledge it or to try to hide it in some way always feels false to me in the show. Yeah, I mean, Matt and I talked about it on the first night, and I don't think that made the edit at all mm-hmm. um, in terms of just like, I have a following, but I am here for you. You know, like, I do mm-hmm. have a normal job. I'm not here to, like, make money off social no, media. No, they gave you a crown edit. They're not going to have you talking about <laughs> social media but it's like you said it's real life it's not it shouldn't be yeah. like villainized it's just like especially after the pandemic social media is just a huge thing yeah. of like everyone's routine how people communicate yeah there's form of entertainment you know? it literally at this point is like uh don't let anyone know that you talk on a telephone 
Okay, don't mention that technology or that you watch a television. It really is like <laughs> there. I remember in the uh, late '90s, early 2000s, when you first started seeing movies come out where people would like talk on a cell phone, and it would be like, oh, okay, that's weird. They're absorbing it into like what is reality now. I feel like The Bachelor just will never do that with social media. It's always going to ignore it and paint it as like this evil fucking thing. Yeah, I don't know why. You have shows like Netflix, uh, The Perfect Match. They're very openly talking yeah. about it. And I think that makes it like more entertaining and relatable in real life. Have you watched Perfect Match? I did watch only the first episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did have a temporary moment with uh, Nick. And mm. so seeing him on the first episode, I was just like, oh, my God. <laughs> I can like, see how that might Wait, color what are you your doing? Wait, no. So you had, as you described, a temporary <laughs> moment with yeah. Nick. Yes. Wh- after you get into The Bachelor, or I guess any reality dating program, yeah. but The Bachelor is kind of still the the big one, the Cadillac. Yeah. Um, do you then obviously, I guess, have access to more temporary moments with other oh, <laughs> players from other games? Oh, I mean, reality TV, yeah. That's, like, I think, a given. You're, like, Even if you're not on the same show, you kind of all bond over just like the experience of like, mm. oh, you're a reality person. Um, but then also you have access to like actual people who are of status and fame and talent. Mm. Yeah, Game so. of Roses, <laughs> yeah. et cetera. Well, how many temporary moments have you had? What's yeah, the... Wait, these uh, <laughs> temporary moments? I mean, there's about? an actor here. There's a, a singer <laughs> times two over there. Like, I don't know. But yeah. it's, it's such yes. a weird world, honestly. Like, I'm still reflecting. I'm like, what is my life? Like, there's moments of, like, normal a normal day, you know? And then there's yeah. moments where I'm like, that just happened. Okay. <laughs> it's well, how do you get access to these people? Is it just literally DM? Um, DMs it for sure, but then also like Raya is a like a okay. approval only or referral yeah. based app where there's like actual like celebrities on there and then you'll get matched with someone you're like, "Oh, snap. Okay. <laughs> what do I say to this guy? <laughs> Loved you in that movie." <laughs> you know? No, no, play it cool, play it cool. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah. Okay. So you're on right you're out on the you're on the apps or the or the elite apps. Uh how is that going for you? You know, in my temporary experience of that, I think it's actually not for me. I actually think I'm looking for a regular offline kind of guy. Mm-hmm. I think I have enough uh personality and social media to cover the both of us yes. and I just want someone who's just like a civilian <laughs> sure okay. yeah civilians um, listening <laughs> well like you know I, I try to date other people who have social media and it's just it it's just weird I don't know it doesn't it's not meshing for me mm. I think I'm gonna be best fit with someone who's just like not a public figure in yeah. any capacity Will you force whoever you start dating seriously next, like let's say date three, four, you'll force them to delete their Instagram account? Mm. No, <laughs> no, no, no. But I also have learned. So you do. Yeah. I, yeah. I've also learned I will not. I will not announce it. Like I will. Yeah. I will try my best to, to protect him and 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 remain private in that. I think Andy Dorfman did a really good job in yeah. having her relationship. And it wasn't until right before their engagement that she finally came out and was like, "Here's my man," you know. Mm. Um, and so I admire the way that she did that. And even like Claire had a private mm-hmm. wedding, you know, all these things. That's mm-hmm. just like, you gotta, you gotta keep some stuff close for yourself and not share it with totally. everybody. Um, I'm going to go back real quick to the moment in your season 17, when you're about to walk off the show, you've had enough. What do producers do? Like, what's that conversation like when a producer comes over to you to convince you to stay in this thing that is causing you so much stress? I did not talk to anybody. I stormed off the fastest I could to my bathroom. I locked the door. I took off my mic. It, there was like two doors, like a bathroom with a door and then like the main bathroom. Mm-hmm. I took the mic off and I threw it in the room, closed that b- bathroom door. And I just didn't, I didn't know what I was going to do. I was just shutting down. And that's when they sent in Caitlin to talk yeah. to me. Oh, but here's the funny thing. Again. There's a producer named Caitlin. And so when they said it was Caitlin, oh. For the first, like, I don't know, 10 minutes, I do not want to talk to her because I don't realize it's Bristow. (laughs) And so I said something, (laughs) I said something like, blah, 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 you guys. And she goes, you guys, don't loop me in with them. I go, Bristow? And she's like, yes. And that's when I open the door and let her in and then lock the door again. So what, I mean, she obviously is one of the greatest players of all time. 
Pace Case believes she is the greatest. I yeah. believe that's Nick Vial. We will forever have this argument. But uh, what was it like getting to know her, becoming a friend of hers? Oh, I mean, I yeah. assume she was a hero of yours from having watched her season and everything. Well, she publicly posted that she yeah. DM'd Caitlin in 2016, supporting her. Yeah, long Caitlin's for all of this. Yeah, Caitlin's been one that I've loved since the beginning, and so then to like get to meet her and become friends with her and like she's like a sister now like truly it's just it's crazy to like reflect back and like even reading like the old message I sent her yeah. and just being like I've always been a fan of her and like to have her like there with me was just like the coolest way to go with being a bachelorette mm -hmm. having her right there that's awesome that's who I would want to be my host I'd want Nick Vile and I would want <laughs> Caitlin and uh, Dark Lord Palmer yeah you would want Nick Vile to host your yeah. season so uh how you feel about being a bachelor take a moment <laughs> say your boss like the journey begins oh god that's my Nick Vile thank you very much uh, <laughs> pretty good I get it I can I see it yeah who it's his essence. do you think from your season would make the best bachelor? Ooh. Um I was really rooting for Andrew Spencer. Yeah. I really was rooting for him. I, I thought, think he still could be it. Yeah, he's Maybe. I don't I don't know again, I don't know how they come up with the decision. Like I don't know how I was picked as bachelorette at the end of the day. I don't know how they didn't go with Andrew at the end of the day. I don't know what goes on behind the scenes. But I just think Andrew would be such a good bachelor. I think mm. so, too. He's so charismatic and, like, I don't know. He comes off as kind. I don't know him. He's charming. He's kind. He's funny. He's playful. I I, I don't know, like, him in today, but I assume he still is looking for a wife. I don't know. I just mm -hmm. think he'd be a great bachelor, and I, and I hope one day they explore that while they can. Do you think they will, though? Do you think they will ever have a bachelor of color again? I don't know what is happening behind the scenes because in my opinion it it feels like they're going backwards yes but again i haven't fully like watched the seasons really since mine but just from a very surface level i'm yeah. like wh wh who's making these decisions what's the plan are you guys just like letting the the ship sink or is there like a plan to like save it i, don't, I can't tell nor can we i mean what it seems like to me is that it's always just like Band-Aid, Band-Aid, Band-Aid. Let's get through this season. Suck the last drops of blood out of the stone. That's what it feels like. I don't mm -hmm. think they understand like the legacy of what this show is and the potential for it to really go on infinitely, to become a professional sport-like thing that lasts 100 years. Um, I think it could do that. But yeah, they just seem hell-bent on like, just kick out this thing, avoid the controversy at all costs. Here's a White Bachelor. We, we tried a Black Bachelor once. That didn't work out well for us. I yeah. think they're super scared to have to like deal with any of that again. It just feels like lazy producing. In my I agree. Opinion. Like no one wants to like shake it up. It's a formula that they've had for like 20 plus years. Yeah. They're like, it's worked. It's, let's just keep going. But it's like, it's it's not working anymore. Yeah. Um, But no one cares, I think, enough to make the change. I don't know. I have no idea. It's shocking, though, when you hear the audience express time and time again the things they want to see. And you see other shows doing it and doing it well. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's all the answers are right there it's in possible. front of you guys. Yeah. You're just, not, you're choosing to, like, turn your head. I feel like there's something, like... It's a pattern that we've seen with politics where it's just like, okay, we only have white men doing it. And then we like try some other stuff. And then there's like a backlash or a white lash back. And then like we, you slowly move forward in progress. And that's what I'm hoping this is. It's like, okay, maybe there's a little bit of a backlash, but then like it's ultimately going to be going in the right direction. That's what I'm hoping. It's my hope too. But America and Bachelor Nation. <laughs> <laughs> It just feels to me like, you know, we've been watching these past couple of seasons. It it feels like, and again, I don't know if this is true. It feels like to me, the producers don't like the show. The people making the show have contempt for it. And I don't know how you can produce anything then at that point that is like entertaining to an audience, how that isn't like baked into the very thing itself. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it means getting rid of those producers, the five maybe that you had your dinner with. I don't know <laughs> if they're responsible specifically, but it's what it feels like. Uh, the world around The Bachelor, the podcast, like, what was that experience like coming out of both of your seasons and interacting with that? Like, what is, how has your relationship with the fandom changed? Oh, I mean, 
there's just like so many things to say. In the moment, it's very exciting. Like you, you are playing into it. You are feeding this beast and you're giving them everything that they need and want from you until you are like empty, <laughs> which I know that sounds <laughs> so dark, <laughs> but okay. truly you're just, you are so excited to like share your experience and your journey. And there, Blake and I were so excited. Our, our season wasn't even spoiled. Blake's straight up telling the guys like, oh yeah, she didn't pick me. Like he's lying to them. Like we're just so excited for this moment. You know, and we're just giving the world whatever they want. And then there's just silence and suddenly you're like forgotten about and you're just like, all right. And now we got to figure it out in the real world. And it's just Blake and I navigating this whole new life together. And it's crazy. Do producers like reach out to you at all at this point? I will say my own opinion. I it, the whole thing was so bizarre. I, I was like, are they mad at me? Mm -hmm. Because. The, I did not feel the support that I would have expected. And maybe they're, maybe that's just business as usual. I have no idea what the norm is because this is the one and only time I was a bachelorette that got engaged. I just really thought there was going to be a lot more support and love and care and nurture with Blake and I. And it, we really just like Michelle season was next, I think, or maybe it was paradise. I just felt like you were just eaten and spit out and moved on. Truly. Yeah. And I know other leads have said the same thing. Um, so I, I feel like that is maybe just business as usual and nothing mm -hmm. personal but it was kind of shocking that there wasn't going to be a little bit more of a a friendship yeah i mean you're right in that your year had it was bachelor 25 bachelor at 17 paradise 7 bachelor at 18 just boom 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 there was no like there wasn't a day maybe or maybe there was one week i think that year no, that didn't maybe. have bachelor airing somewhere in it you know oh yeah and you're coming off covid like people yeah. like we're just all losing our minds <laughs> totally truly. so i mean maybe that was a an element of it but i think you know what you're saying i think is true kind of across the board i think they do just say like okay we produced your season fuck off goodbye like do you talk to any producers now yeah there are some that i stay in touch with um some that are no longer with the show mm, and i think that kind of says a lot in terms of like so it takes the right person, I think, to be a producer on a show like that because y yes. you, well, <laughs> I don't <laughs> You have to have no soul <laughs> and have no problem manipulating people to I destroy their lives. None of that. <laughs> 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 but I, I will say my producer um, recently actually reached out. We had not spoken since my engagement. My engagement felt just like such a weird thing. Like it just, I think we were just all tired. Like the, there was nothing like yay like it just felt like everyone's just like ready to just be done yeah um and he him and i were so close leading up to like my bachelorette experience like that like it felt like we were best friends we were facetiming every day like i loved like loved him like wow. as like a brother a friend like we we're so close and it was truly heartbreaking when the by the end of the experience it just tore us apart in terms of like our friendship i could cry actually oh shit <laughs> yeah it's Sorry, I did not expect that. Um, it's a tough experience to go through. Like, it, mm -hmm. it really just, it really fucks you up. Um, and so, yeah, we we didn't talk for, like, two years. And then recently he reached out to to talk and, and, and go over things. And uh, we had a drink and he apologized. And it just brought me, like, so much, um, like, peace and closure <laughs> in the experience. Because it really is just, it's the hardest thing I've ever done, truly. Dude, sorry, I don't mean to like. Me I'm sorry, <laughs> just like reliving all these emotions, you know, yeah. and like putting myself back in the in the mindset that I was in during during filming and after filming and the in the relationships that are no longer there. It's just it's just like I don't recommend the the experience to people. They're like, did you have fun? I'm like, fuck off. <laughs> like, fun is not the first word you think of when you go through that. Totally. So. Do you regret it? I definitely don't regret it. I mean, like, it's it's obviously, like, had its benefits. And people always say, like, it gave you so much. It's like, yeah, like, depression, <laughs> you know? Like, mm -hmm. there there are things to gain from it. But at the end of the day, it's up to you to continue to, like, farm that and, and benefit. Like, the, the show didn't give me the the comedy that I'm doing now. You know, like, mm -hmm. that's something I took on my own. Um, so I don't, I don't regret it. It just took a lot of healing to get to a mental place that i am in now mm. yeah it, it's just it was it was so hard <laughs> and does the show help you with that healing at all is there, are there like therapists that they offer you after the show or anything i know there's one during show yeah i mean they definitely offer support but like there's a certain point where you are just like 
you just want to be done. You don't want yeah. you don't want the resources anymore. You don't want them anymore. You feel betrayed, lied, used. Like there's just a lot of negativity, at least for me. Um, you know, I can't speak for anyone else's feelings and opinions, but um, yeah, I didn't I didn't want to utilize them. And there's just even a level of like trust. You know, sure. I'm sure there's like laws that like protect you, but like you're just so triggered. You're just like I don't know yeah. that I want to use your people. You know. Totally, because they could just be producers, or at least talking who, back to I mean, producers who, about who really not course. like truly. I also just like don't even know. Like you can have a therapist, but like you know, I have a therapist, and uh, look, she hasn't fixed everything. <laughs> <laughs> like I've shout had, out to Liz's I've therapist. had shout out to her. She's doing a great job, but you know, there's only so much she can do. I like I have struggled with my mental health in terms of like just. And, you know, we're on a much smaller platform and stuff, but just dealing with the feedback and the the constant, it's a lot of, like, opinions about yourself. And, like, I don't think the brain is formulated to be able to, like, handle that. And yours is on such a larger scale that I'm just, like, it's not surprising to me that, like, this is how you would be feeling. And we've heard Clayton talk about it very openly about how bad his mental health was from going through this experience. And I, like... I don't know what the solution is. Like maybe it, yeah, I don't know, but it's definitely something to consider. And I don't think it's something that you need to make a TV show. I'm sorry. Like there's tons of TV yeah. shows that are made with, with productions where the showrunner it like sets a kind example for the rest and you can still make good entertaining TV. I've worked on those shows before. Yeah. Um, yeah. I am. Yeah. Well, I'm 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 grateful you did the experience because I have <laughs> yeah, enjoyed, too. you know, your play and I've enjoyed getting to know you. And yeah, I really appreciate I appreciate the support. You're wearing our you wore our shirt. Like, I, I love know. you guys. It's I, fantastic. I, I truly, you guys have been awesome um, as a podcast. I even listened while filming. <laughs> That's extraordinary. Yeah, I mean, I mean secretly, like in the bathroom <laughs> when I was by myself, and if I heard anyone open the door, I turn that off. Oh my god! So we were there. They're being haunted by us. They're like, right. I swear I hear yeah. bachelor clues. I don't yeah, know and now they're really on. being haunted by us. Where they're like, I swear I just saw a player reading their book in the mansion. <laughs> <laughs> so you've moved on from this. Yeah. How do you feel about the like where the franchise is now with uh, Jesse Palmer? hosting i mean from what i've heard he seems like he's doing well i was sad that they moved away from having the women host mm -hmm. at least for bachelorette like i i feel so grateful to have taisha and caitlin and that made sense to me as a woman going through it especially even yeah. the previous lead i thought there was a formula that they would stick with where maybe like the last lead could like help the new lead or like mm -hmm. just some kind mm -hmm. of girl support and the fact that they didn't do it i was a little sad about that yeah but I mean, in terms of like the host role, people have different opinions. I think it is so small. So like, great, let Jesse be the host. But other people, I think, put a lot of weight on who it needs to be. Or you know, yeah. I'm not watching because Chris isn't here. It's like if you're yeah. watching the show for Chris, you you have a weird mindset because there's so much. <laughs> there's just so much more to the show than the host. So yeah, that's a real you weirdo. We watch yeah. the show for Chris Harrison. Zach Shellcross, <laughs> you want to talk about being a weirdo? You need to talk to the Chris Harrison fans. Speaking of, have you listened to his podcast? I have not, but I've heard like bits and pieces. Yeah. I assumed, given his large payout, that there really wouldn't be a lot of tea that he'd be spilling. Yeah. Um, but I haven't really. That's accurate. You wouldn't he, uh, go on as a guest. Oh, right? absolutely <laughs> not. Ugh. I would. If you're listening to Chris Harrison, I'll come on. No, thank uh, you. He recently said in an, in an episode, I think the one that came out this week, that they would be crazy at ABC to not be having the conversation about bringing him back as the host. <laughs> He is confident, isn't he? Well, he shits all over the show. He's like, you know, we know their ratings are down. They're not making as much money. And if it's a product, you look at your product like if it's not working, we need to change something. And if you have something that, you know, worked before, why not go back to it? He says something like that. Oh this is gosh. paraphrasing. But um, that's the Dark Lord, the original Dark Lord. But let's well, move I on. From... Dramaturgs love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh what did uh, he call him? His, what? His dramas? His uh, drama nation is drama what he's nation? trying to get going. Jeez. And he also claims that he coined Bachelor Nation. 
That being said, <laughs> let's move away from Bachelor Nation. You're now doing stand-up comedy. Yeah. How, what is this like for you, getting on stage in front of people, live audience? Uh, were you on any group dates that did that? Did you have to do any artistic performances? Yeah. We had like a poetry writing. Yes, and that's when I got on my right. knees. Oh, yeah. And like yes. assaulted James or Matt, I should say. Um, yeah. So in that one, I can't remember who... It's been so long. But yeah, we did have a, a date like right. that. Right. So did that group date uh, prepare you for what it's like <laughs> to be a stand-up comedian now? No, no, not at all. <laughs> no, it's funny because I'll, I'll get nervous performing in front of an audience. People are like, you were the bachelorette. You performed on so many people. It's like, yeah. oh, this is so different. It's so different. Yeah. This is like live entertainment. You're getting instant feedback if people are laughing or not. You know, at least with TV, like you don't see the viewers. You don't know anything. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I'm trying to do some stand up. And um, what what inspired you to do this? I've actually always wanted to do stand up, even before going on the show, oh. which is how I got my TikTok following because all the comedy clubs had shut down, and I was like, well, because I was just about getting ready to do my first open mic, and just mm -hmm. for fun, the club shut down. So I was like, well, I'll just start putting stuff oh. on TikTok. Grew a little bit of an audience, and I was like, oh, maybe I actually. I'm funny. I don't, maybe yeah. I have it. I don't know. And then, um, took like a two year detour to go on the show. And then once I got off and finally like collected myself again, I was like, all right, so back to that, uh, role or that dream you had before, let's go ahead and try open mic again. And so I did, I did open mic. And then one of the girls who produces shows was at that open mic. And she was like, I have a crazy idea. Do you want to do like a 10 minute set on my show? And it was so soon. Like I'd literally done like maybe three open mics yeah but i'm a big believer in like acknowledge you're scared but do it scared like don't mm -hmm. let don't let fear stop you you know so i was like okay and then i wrote like a 10 minute set and it went really well and then since then i've produced two of my own shows with like 250 people and it's they've just been so much fun and bachelor nation is is so supportive at these shows like it's just mm -hmm. they they're the positive of all yeah. the negative the That's people amazing. at these shows are like the best people, truly. I love that. I love it because, I mean, it's your dream, but also it's something we haven't seen anyone from Bachelor Nation do, and it's yeah. so hard, and like I admire that a lot, and I think you're going to be very successful at it. Because that is because you are funny, and that's why you got the TikTok following. That's why they cast you. That's why they made you the Bachelorette. I agree, hundred percent. Who, if I may ask, are some of your influences comedically, or who, like Ooh. what stand ups are you watching right now that you like? I mean, Whitney Cummings has to be like Whitney the Cummings. biggest one yeah. because my very first. So technically, before I even did an open mic. I did an opening set for her at like Anaheim Grove. I remember this, yeah. Yeah. So oh I had never God. even done an open mic, but again, like she offered and it's like an opportunity you couldn't pass up. Totally. Uh, I had to get it approved by the show and surprisingly they were like, yeah, just don't talk about the show. Mm -hmm. And so I did it. <laughs> did I do it well? I mean, for my very first time ever, I did great. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's make sure the scale is correct. <laughs> But um, but yeah, it was like it was just wild. That was like my first time ever. So I love uh, Whitney, Taylor Tomlinson, Ali Wong. Um, those are the ones that come to mind. John Mulaney, I think, is great. Dane Cook, I always have to shout him out because he was the first comedian when I was like a teenager that got me into comedy, like during mm. like the height of him. And he was even the first comic I think I ever saw. And oh, wow. so he was like my first introduction back then of like oh i love watching comedy uh, who doesn't love laughing but you'd be surprised how many people haven't gone to a comedy show you yeah. know it's i mean i think it's more common in la obviously to do it it's but it's like such a fun thing to do and i recommend everyone go and see katie whenever <laughs> you possibly can we will be yes um do you you're enjoying it though you're sticking with it you're doing your reps yeah you're, you like making people laugh yeah I have to just remind myself like that I am new um you know because I do have these opportunities to perform with like these really great comics and then I'm like oh my god they're so good or like what if I'm not good enough and then I'm like Katie like you haven't even done this for a full year yeah. you know so I'm already like, like I want to see me a year from now but like I really have to like enjoy like the the process uh and and put in the time and, and give myself a little bit of grace of like you're gonna bomb sometimes at an open mic and you don't have 20 minutes of content yet because you're still writing and developing so i mean even professional comedians bomb so oh, you have to like yeah, yeah. it's all yeah. part of it's it part of the process yeah 
I'm yeah, I'm very excited to see where it goes. I can see a Katie Thurston special, you know. Absolutely. Give me give me some time, but Netflix, yeah. I'm coming for you. <laughs> yeah. You absolutely should. And do it on Netflix. Because yeah. then you'll be eligible to be on Perfect Match. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm okay there. <laughs> Politely, no, thank you. They start bringing comedians from Netflix, Netflix uh, comedy specials to be yeah, on Perfect Match. So like anything on yeah. Netflix counts. Uh, I would love that. Now Dave Chappelle's on Perfect Match. I Man. really like that show for, for what it's worth. Yeah. Maybe we can get a version where they blur out one person. Anyone, Hopefully. Anyone's had moments. Um, <laughs> but no, we can't thank you enough for sitting down with us and having this conversation. Yeah. Uh, like I said, it's been a long time coming. We're huge fans. Uh I, we can yeah. put to rest. I get a lot of DMs about, did I coach you? Oh, yeah. We should at least. Can we tell that's them? Good, yes, please tell them. Good. Okay, you heard it here first. He did not coach me. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering. You were wondering. <laughs> no, it, it, uh, I never coached you whatsoever. Yeah. We started DMing a little bit, I think. I don't even know when it was. Maybe I mean it would have been after the fact because that yeah. like after Matt's season, that's when I started listening to other right. podcasts. Yeah, uh, I did, I wouldn't even know who I was messaging because it would be through the Game of Roses. Oh right, handle. Yeah. So to mm-hmm. me, it was like anonymous person. Yeah. And I was still so new to the the podcast that I remember at one point again. I don't know who I spoke to, but I was like, "Oh, this is a great podcast for guys to listen to" because mm-hmm. it was like from a sports eye. But now that I like fully understand the podcast, I'm like, "No, this is like a podcast for everybody." Yeah. You know. But, uh-huh. Yeah. Primarily, yeah. I, don't, Primarily I don't know how many guys women. are listening. <laughs> I mean, mostly yeah. women. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, find some guys. Send this episode <laughs> yeah. to them. We would love them to join us. <laughs> um, but no, once again, thanks so much for doing this. And yeah. please let everybody know when your next show is, where they can find yeah. all your stuff. Yeah. Uh, follow me at the Katie Thurston. <laughs> I remember uh, <laughs> that big day when she switched from Bent with Katie to the Katie Thurston. I know. Yeah. It was like a piece of me died when that happened. <laughs> um, I do have a show next month. It's actually at the Improv here in oh, LA. Oh, shit. Yeah, but um, I don't have details quite yet, so you're going to have to just follow me and, and stay in touch yes. with like my stories when I announce it, because anytime I announce it, the tickets go pretty quick. So Yeah, oh we'll be God. there. I'm yeah. going to put notifications on. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. wait. Well, thanks yeah, again so thanks much. Thanks for joining yes, us. Yes, thank you for having me, you guys. This was Our fun. Pleasure. Yeah.